Amen. Will you turn to someone and say, Blessed New Year? Blessed New Year. Amen. Yeah. New Year, New Year, New Year. New Year is always very exciting. Amen. New Year is something, uh, it's always a reminder. It's, a, it's, it's always a reminder uh, uh, that we, every day is new. There's always this moment of looking forward to what God wants to do in our life. Uh, we're exciting. We are excited because of the new things that we believe God wants to do. And I entitled uh, my message, uh, Year uh, 2020 will be a year of faith. Will be a year of faith. And um, uh, one of the reasons is I believe God wants to uh, bring us, uh, whether corporately as a church or uh, individually, I believe that God is going to bring us to a new level this year. We can expect great things for God. And it's also my vision as we uh, go into this year that we as a church, corporately, as a family, and also again individually, uh, we, will, we will be the people that uh, it will be a year that when we will boldly take risks, so you mean take risks. If we will boldly take risks knowing that the Lord will be there to lend a helping hand even when we fail. Uh, it's going to be a year that I believe will be marked by much uh, uh, victories and success in many ways and blessings in many ways. Uh, but you also be, there will be seasons that we will be down, there will be seasons of defeats, but yet we will not be afraid because the Lord is with us, the Lord is with you to help you even at those very moments. It will be a year when we will obey the Lord's commands to get out of our comfort zone and to obey Him and to follow Him in order that we can draw closer to Him. It will be a year Jesus will say, come to me. And it will be a year when you know that coming to Him means you need to get out of your boat and out of your comfort zone in order to draw closer to Him. It will also be a year when we will experience greater things. Say me, greater things. It will be a year, I believe, for many of us, we will experience... Uh, 2009 was a great year. But 2020 will be a greater year uh, because you dare to follow Him, because you dare to come out of your comfort zone, because you dare to do something different, because you dare to get out and of the boat. And uh, I'm taking my passage from Matthew chapter 14, 22 to 33. Um, let's read along together. The Bible says this, that immediately Jesus told His followers to get into the boat and to go ahead of Him across the lake. He uh, stayed there to send the people home. And after He had sent them away, He went by Himself up into the hills to pray. And it was late and Jesus was there alone. And by this time, the boat was already far away from land. It was being hit by waves because the wind was blowing against it between 3 and 6 o'clock in the morning. It's very dark. It's late night. And Jesus came to them walking on the water. And when his followers saw him walking on the water, they were afraid. And then they said, it's a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But Jesus quickly spoke to them, have courage. Say me, have courage. Have courage, the Lord says, it is I. Do not be afraid. And Peter said, Lord, if it is really you, then command me to come to you on the water. And Jesus said, come. And Peter left the boat and walked on the water. Say me, walk on the water. Walk on the water to Jesus. But when Peter saw the wind and the waves, he became afraid and he began to sink and he shouted, Lord, save me. And immediately, Jesus reached out his hands and caught Peter. And Jesus said, your faith is small. Why did you doubt? 
after they got into the boat, the wind became calm. And those who were in the boat worshipped Jesus and they said, Truly, you are the Son of God. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we just want to commit, commit this message to you. Commit what we are going to say, what we are going to hear, and what you are going to do to you. Today, we thank you. We thank you for 2019, great year for many of us. And Lord, now even as we are on, on this, this, this first week of the year, as we look forward to this brand new year, Lord, we are going to look forward in faith, O oh God. We're going to believe in you that 2019 is a great year. 2020 will be a greater year for all of us in many ways, O oh God. And so, Lord, we, we, we commit ourselves to you. We ask that you speak to us, speak to us and, and, and confirm to us and convict us in our heart what we are to do in order, in order that we can position ourselves to receive that greater blessing from you. Lord, we commit all this to your loving hands. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So, why faith? Why year 2020 ought to be a year of faith? Why the importance of faith? Why, pastor, you want to talk about faith in this first service? Well, uh, many reasons, but one of the main reasons I want to say is this. is simply because when you have faith in Jesus, it, it releases His power, God's power, Christ's power in our lives. It releases His power. Say me, release His power. When you exercise faith, when you exercise trust in the Lord Jesus, when I exercise that kind of faith in the Lord, when I say to myself, I'm not going to look at the circumstances, I will just trust you, Lord. You say, come, means I will come. When I exercise such kind of faith, I will experience the power of God in my life. And uh, it's clear, when Jesus told Peter, come, the Bible says Peter obeyed, left the boat, and he walked on the water. Obviously, we know that this walking on the water is not the ability of Peter. It is the manifestation of the Lord's power in his life. That walking on water is not about people, Peter. That walking on water is about the power of Christ onto a man who is willing to obey him, who is willing to just step up in faith, who is willing to exercise faith in the words of Christ who say, come. And so this is the thing that I hope we will capture today. Uh, Mark 9.23, uh, Jesus said the same thing, if you can believe, and now this is not about belief in faith, but belief in Jesus Christ. If you can believe in the Son of God, all things are possible to him who believes. I pray today that as we begin this year, some of you here, this will sink deep into your heart and into your spirit. Maybe you are wondering, why are you not experiencing the promises of God in your life? Why are you not experiencing the provision? Why are you not experiencing the protection? Why are you not experiencing the healing, the restoration? Maybe for some of you, the Lord is asking you, are you exercising faith in me first? Before you talk about me coming into your life and doing a great work in your life, ask yourself, do you have faith in me? Do you have faith in me? God is asking some of us here and He's reminding when you, when you dare to trust me, when you dare to get out of the boat, when I ask you to get out of the boat, you will experience my promises in your life in a very personal way. The lack of faith at the same time, the same way, just as the presence of faith will release His power, the lack of faith will inhibit or will limit His ministry in our life. It's clear in that same passage, on one hand, we see when the obedience of faith takes place, a man can walk on water. But at that moment, at the same time, when he stops exercising faith and looks at his circumstances, he begins to sink. So, it's quite clear from Scripture, 
that when we exercise faith, we experience God in a way. But when we stop exercising faith and when we start looking at the things that are happening around us and we start to evaluate with our mind wow, what should happen, what should be the consequences, suddenly doubt comes into us and then we will sink and we will not experience what God wants to do. It is my conviction. Jesus wanted Peter to walk all the way to him. But because of his doubt, it was stopped in the middle. The Lord wanted, this is my conviction from the scripture, I don't think Jesus wanted him to just come out and then walk halfway and then make him sing. No. The, the plan of God, the plan of Christ was really to let him experience walking on water all the way. I believe for some of you, I want you to know that what God is doing in your life, God doesn't want to short circuit it. He wants to continue. He wants to bring it to completion in your life. And, 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 and the one thing that we should do is to continue to trust Him all the way. Because the moment, the moment we look at these circumstances, the moment we rely on our own logic and understanding, not that brains are not important, our brains are gifted by God, but it has to be uh, uh, our, our, our planning, our thinking must be uh, a kind, uh, the, the mind of Christ must be on us, so to speak, the Bible says. Uh, it has to be a kind of thinking that is a, a regenerated kind of thinking led by the Holy Spirit and, and, and has to be um, uh, uh, mixed with faith, so to speak. Jesus says in another uh, uh, passage uh, whereby he was not accepted as uh, the Son of God. People saw him. They were amazed by what he was doing. But because of their, their reasoning, they say this is just the son of a carpenter. Ha, who can he be? Even though he can do such great things, but doubt come into your heart when they look at who he is as a person. And, 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 and they restrict themselves with their understanding of who Christ is. And so, the Bible says, Jesus did not do many miracles because they had no faith because they had no faith in Him, because they do not trust Him, because they view Him as just simply the son of a carpenter. Today, how do you view Jesus Christ? How do you view Jesus Christ? Is He just someone that we sing about? Is He just someone that other people had faith but is far away from you? Is He just a concept? Is He just a religion? Today is Jesus personal to you. Today the question is, are you willing to really trust Him and declare that He is the Son of God? That yes, you, 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 from a human perspective, you may try to see Him otherwise. But yet from the revelation of God, it says that He is the Son of God. Today are you willing to exercise that faith in Him. Only when we exercise faith in Jesus Christ as the Son of God, as the King of Kings, as the Lord of Lords, as the Alpha and the Omega, then we are positioned to receive the favour of God upon our lives. Then we will not be limiting Him. Then we are opening the doors for Him, for Him to come into our lives to work what he wants to work. And I want to now uh, just play a short testimony uh, of a Filipino couple and uh, uh, how that the Lord uh, did a miracle in their life because they had the faith to trust in him. They had the faith to be humble to his great will and just say if it be your will and they had the faith to just pray to him and the Lord was able to do something miraculous in their life. Hi, I am Jay. I am Daphne. I am working here in Shady as a teacher and we have been living in Malaysia together with our daughter for four years now. The Lord has been faithful to us and He has favored us in many ways 
and being part of our church family here in Church of Praise is one of them. We are humbled to be given the opportunity to share our testimony of the Lord's greatness and faithfulness concerning our prayers about the calamity that hit the Philippines just recently. On the 3rd of uh, December, Typhoon Kamuri or Typhoon Tisui landed in the northern eastern part of the Philippines, very near to our hometown, where my family's 6 hectares line, uh, locally called Limao Pastori Plantation Farm, is located. Other than the limes, we have uh, coconut trees and other fruit bearing trees in the farm. It is my parents' plantation and I was managing it for many years before I left the Philippines. Now that we are here in Malaysia, it's one of my brothers who's managing his it on my behalf. Months prior to the typhoon, we invested money in it in the hope of earning more profit so that we would be able to start our own business in the Philippines. But due to the typhoon that was predicted to landfall in the region where our hometown is, we had expected that the destruction in the plantation would be extensive and our investment would be gone. Then we prayed to the Lord. Uh, I thought it, our farm was to be destroyed. Starting up our business, small business next year would not have been His will. So I just fully surrendered my will to the Lord. Most importantly, we asked for protection for our respective families in every Filipino affected. While keeping track of the Typhoon's pathway, we silently prayed that the Lord would do a miracle and save our farm. I fervently prayed and quoted Psalm 57 1. Have mercy, O God, have mercy, for in you I or we take refuge. We will take refuge in the shadow of your wings until the disaster has passed. And the Lord listened to our prayers. As the hours passed by, the typhoon's track slowly shifted downwards, away from our area. We were extremely awed and relieved as this meant our farm would be saved from the massive impact and would only probably get some minor damages caused by the heavy rains and strong gusty winds, but things would still be manageable. Even more amazing was that the typhoon's path moved towards the west side that consequently saved Manila, our capital city. More distractions would have resulted if it had struck Manila. The following day, we, we were very grateful to hear from our respective families that everyone was safe and another great news was that our farm was safe and only a few trees and had been uh, uprooted even our dirty kitchen which was made of wood attached to the main house was left intact. The Lord be praised. Through this experience, the Lord has proven once again His faithfulness to us and the steadfastness of His word and promises. He is always dependable and He does not disappoint His children. From the way this school event turned out, we knew that God was telling us that we can push through with our business plans and that He was going to bless us with abundant harvest. We would like to close this testimony with a powerful Bible verse that we always claim and depend on, which is from Ephesians 3.20 that says, With God's power working in us, He can do great things in our lives, much, much more than anything we can ask or imagine. The Lord be praised. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. I'm not sure whether you noticed at one point, they say if, if it's the Lord's will, uh, then they will just submit it to the Lord. If it's not the Lord's will for them to have this business, then the typhoon will hit and, and they will just accept it from the Lord. And, and, and I want to just say this as well. When we talk about exercising faith in God, it has to be a humble kind of uh, faith. Uh, uh, a faith that acknowledges that God will have the final say in our lives. I'm not talking to you about 
uh, exercising faith, then you will get what you want. You exercise faith, you will get what you need, but not what you want. So when we talk about going into the year 2020, we are not talking about our will or our wants. We are talking about God's will and God's wants. And, and definitely, God's plan, the Bible says clearly, is never to harm you, but to prosper you. But maybe not the way you think it should be. But our hearts are open unto the Lord. And so, this was a great testimony of a couple who has decided to get out of their boat, go back to Philippines and just trust the Lord. They have prayed about it, so they are exercising faith and the Lord honoured that faith. And, and show to them in this way a little miracle, a, 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 a little experience of walking on water, the possibility of walking on water when you dare to trust Him. And so, why this is why faith is important. So, how do we exercise faith in God then? So, I just want to uh, share three things with you and that I believe will be necessary for many of you here. I, I hope you remember this as you go forth into year 2020 because year 2020, like any other years, will be a year of challenge as well. It will be a year of blessing for you, but it will also be a year of challenges as well. It will be a year where you will come to a point you really do not know what to do. It will be a year of uncertainty. Uh, moments of uncertainty as well. It will be a year that may create fear in you, in your situation. And so, as you move into this year uh, with its challenges and its favour and its blessings, I hope you remember these three things that I want to share with you. I believe, I believe this is how the work works, uh, the, work, the Lord works in our life. And, and when we uh, align ourselves with the principle of God's Word, we may not really fully understand why it works, but it works because we are following His principle. Amen. So, uh, the first thing is there to risk it. Say me, risk. Now, faith is about taking risk. Faith is about taking risk. And... Uh, um, the, the Bible says that when Peter saw the wind and the waves, he became afraid and he began to sink. And immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught Peter. Now, I am sure and I'm certain when Peter, when Peter stepped out of the boat in obedience to Christ, I'm sure at that moment, he did consider whether he would sink or not sing. There would be a time at that, the, the, that, that moment in his life that he wonder whether can he really walk on water. And that will be a moment when he had to take the risk. He took a risk to come up. Now, faith to God, to me, is a commitment to overcome the constant recurrence of the experience of fear. And, and why do I say that? Because every time, every time you make a decision to get out of the boat, you make a decision to enter a new challenge area, you make a decision to do something different that you know is from the Lord, you can expect to experience fear. And I experienced fear when I first um, answered the call of God to full-time ministry. I experienced fear when the Lord opened the door for me and led me to Johor Bahru to serve fear. I experienced fear when I took over the, the responsibility to be the senior pastor of this church. I experienced fear, but it, it, is, it is a call of God. And each time doesn't mean, doesn't mean when you want to obey God, there will be no fear. And so, in this respect, if we want to really live an overcoming life, a life of faith, we must be willing to risk it. We must be willing to take risks. Faith and fear in this, in this sense will always be there. When you have faith, you will experience fear. When you exercise faith, there will be moments you experience fear. And that is exactly what happened to people. Uh, to Peter, he exercised faith, he stepped up, he walked on water, but at the same time, suddenly fear come back. 
And so I, I believe, I believe that, that this is the same for all of us. This year as you launch out, maybe after hearing this sermon, you're excited, you're going to make some certain decisions. But be prepared that during those seasons, there will be moments. Today you make the decision, tomorrow morning you wake up, you may wonder, why did I make that decision? And why do you ask that question? Because fear started coming in. Because doubt started coming in. Did I really, really, uh, is this really, really from God? I remember one, uh, one of my mentors many years ago, and he, 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 he wanted, he was sharing about, uh, because he, he's a generous man and, and he wanted to support uh, full-time workers. And so he will teach tuition and then he will give his money to the full-time workers to go to Bible school. And, and, and that time, this conviction came to him, he says, uh, after a service one day. And then he said what he did was, he knew himself too well. He says, um, when I hear the, the word of God, and then when I obey, I know next day I wake up, I will ask myself, is it really from God? And it's simply because I fear that what I'm going to do, there are so many things that I'm afraid of. And so what he said was that he wrote it down. He wrote it down on that day after the service. He wrote it down. This is what God speaks to me and I'm going to do it. And so he put it on his refrigerator. So he said the next morning, truly, really, he said he woke up with a lot of fear. He said, what have I got myself into? Why did I commit myself to God for those things? But then he went to the, the fridge and he says, ah, this is from the Lord. This is from the Lord. He'll just hold on to that. And, 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 and this is his way of handling. So my point is this, that you can expect to experience fear. Doesn't mean, doesn't mean that living a life of faith, we have no fear. So that's why taking risks is very important. This, 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 this thing in us to say, no matter what, I know I cannot be 100% sure, but I will still do it for the Lord. Ecclesiastes 10.8 says very clearly, Risk is everywhere. Anyone who digs a pit might fall into it. Anyone who knocks down a wall might be bitten by a snake. Anyone who serves the Lord full time may end up with no salary from the church. Uh, right, yeah, Patrick, no, no such thing in church of grace. Right, yeah. I mean, there's always risk. You know, there's risk. In this church, we, we, we don't have, or maybe now we have like an and say we have a building. Eh? I mean, many years ago, we don't have building, we don't have nothing. Our, we, everything is by faith. We won't know that next year, you know, we, when we plan for our salary, the board, church board sits down, plan for the salary of the staff. We don't know next year the money will come or not. We only plan by faith. This is the amount that we get and this is the amount we give to, to the staff. And so, there is this unknown, there's always this risk that things may not happen this way. And so we must dare to take risks. We must dare to take risks. So the question maybe I want to ask today is, did Peter fail when he sank? Did Peter really fail? You know, we look at Peter and we say, ah, you this. We'll quote him, we'll use him when, when, when people are shaking in their faith, when... when, when when, when people are having trouble in their walk with God and they are, they are assailed with doubts and then we will show them this passage. You see, you look at Peter, you sing. You must look at Jesus, then you won't sink. So the, the, the general idea is that the sinking is a failure on Peter's part. But is it really so? Well, yes, in one sense. But there were other bigger failures in the boat. Do you realise that? These people, the disciples, they failed. They failed privately. They failed quietly. Their failure was safe, unnoticed, uncriticized. And we just look at Peter. We forgot the disciples that were in the boat. We forgot those that did not come out of the boat. If you ask me, who is the greater failure? The one who is in the boat. Not the one who came out. Why I say that? Well, only Peter experienced the so-called shame of public failure in the eyes of people. He failed publicly. But only Peter, take note, experienced a special connection with Jesus when he sank. 
Only Peter knew the glory of walking on water. Only Peter knew that Jesus is compassionate enough and powerful enough and watchful over his life enough that when he sang, he'll reach down his hands and he'll bring him up. So, risk it. My word for you today, dare to take risks because the Lord is with you. Dare to take risks. A journey of faith doesn't mean a journey of all success. Doesn't mean that you will not fail the Lord. Today, you make a commitment to trust the Lord. Perhaps in the middle of the year, perhaps in, in September or whatever, there will be moments, there will be seasons that you don't have the same kind of faith that make you come out of the boat and you will sink. But the good news today is that even at those moments that you sink, it's not a failure. It is a moment where you have the opportunity, you will experience the grace of God's moments, the grace of God in those moments, the grace of God to lift you up. You will you experience His hands upon your life. And He will bring you up. You experience the mercy of God. And by the year end of 2020, you will truly sing of the goodness of God as what our worship leader led today. It's one of my most favourite songs. I can sing of the goodness of God. I can, I, can, I can testify of the goodness of God. And it is only I, I can be convinced of that I can, I can say it with conviction. It's because there were moments in my life that I had stepped out in faith, but yet I, in halfway through, I failed, I looked at circumstances, I sank, but the Lord Jesus came and He reached out His hands to bring me up. Failures, so to speak, if you want to call it that way, are opportunities for God to do something great in our life, to, to, to reveal Himself for who He is, the God of mercy, the God of goodness, the one whose mercy is chasing after us, as the Sami says. And chasing after us is especially looking at those moments in our life when we need it most, when we fail Him, when we sink. And he comes down. That is why we can boldly and confidently risk it for the Lord. That is why I can tell you confidently, dare to take risks for Jesus Christ. Because when you take that risk for him, in obedience to what he wants to do in your life, you are not alone. He is watching over you. He is not a God who just throws things to you and then you do, and then go off and disappear. No, He will be there. He's watching over you. Today, you make a decision to launch out in faith for certain things that you believe, that you know, that God wants you to do. And you journey on with the confidence that Jesus is watching over you. That Jesus is not going to allow you to sink when you cry out to Him, those moments when you had that feeling, when you had that moment that you feel that you are failing, you cry out to Him. He will come down. He will reach out His hand. So we are in a way assured of that. Failure is not so much an event. It is the way we interpret or judge an event. It is a labour that we attach to it. We want to call it failure. We want to call Peter sinking as failure or we want to call it as an opportunity that he experienced God in a different way, in a more intimate manner. It's up to us to how we want to say. Now, there's this uh, doctor, he's the, he's the inventor for the vaccine for polio, Dr. Jonas Sutt, and, and, and uh, many people knew that he actually failed in many experiments in his pursuit of finding this vaccine. So they asked him, how did it feel to fail 200 times uh, trying to invent a vaccine for polio? And he answered this way. He says, I never failed 200 times at anything in my life. My family taught me never to use that word. I simply discovered 
200 ways how not to make a vaccine for polio. I hope there's some paradigm shift in our lives today as you view what you term as failures in your life and you don't call it failure. You call it as opportunity to experience the mercy of God. Experiences to experience the grace of God. Experiences to experience the goodness of God in your life. Can you hear amen from God's people? A storm is out there and if you get out of your boat, yes, you may fail, you may sink, but if you don't, you probably will miss out a personal encounter with Jesus Christ in the year 2020. A powerful, awesome, personal, life-transforming encounter that we will be certain that Jesus is truly the Son of God. Jesus is truly who He says He is. Jesus is alive. Jesus is real. This will be our journey this year. Okay, let me just share to you a short video clip. Uh, this clip is from Finding Nemo. Huh? Finding Nemo. Like now I'm trying to find your face because the light is off, all right? Uh, finding Nemo. And wait, uh, this is about... There was a moment they were caught in the... They were swallowed by a whale, all right? Then they were trying to get out. And though the, the, the clownfish is the father of, the, uh, of Nemo. And then there's this dory fish. And, and there was this moment uh, that this dory fish actually uh, seemingly can communicate with the whale. So this dory uh, believed that the whale was telling. The whale was telling them because it's going to, the whale is going to vomit them out. It's going to eat them. It's going to vomit them out. And, and as it was trying to vomit them out, all the, the, the clownfish was worried because he was caught. You know, he wanted to go out, but then suddenly all these things happening. You don't know what to do. He just held on. As he was warming up, the water was coming out. And, and, and this is the context. And he just watched. So as we begin this year, as I challenge you to take risks for the Lord, maybe some of you are sitting here, how do you know, Pastor, that all will be well? How do you know that nothing bad will happen to me when I take risks for Jesus Christ? I'm like that dory fish. I'll tell you, I don't know. I don't. I don't. I don't know whether good things or bad things will happen to you this year. But what I do know, what I do know is that God is a good God. What I do know is that Jesus is with you. What I do know that He is a faithful God. What I do know is that He is one who honours faith. What I do know is that He is the Son of God who will release miracles into your life when you dare to exercise faith in Him. What I do know is that your future is secure in Him. What I do know is that your future is, will be definitely better than your past. What I do know is that the, the manifestation of His glory upon your life will be greater than the years before. That's what I know. And I pray today that for some of you here today, maybe this is the word for you. Let it go. I'm not sure exactly what is happening in your life, but you know that God is saying to you, let it go, but you are still holding on. 
You are still holding on in spite even though you are in that circumstances that you really don't want to be. And you know God is saying to you, for you to be released and free from these circumstances, you have to let it go. And then only He can bring you to that freedom that you are looking for, to that space that you are hoping for. Some of you, God is saying that to you. Today, the word of the Lord, as you begin this year, God is saying to you, let it go. Stop holding on to this. This is the thing that will keep you where you are, which is what you don't like. If you really want the Lord to deliver you and bring you to a new season, it's time to let go. Take risks and let go. Can I have the slides? Risks must be taken, someone says this, because the greatest hazard in life is to risk nothing. The person who risks nothing, does nothing, has nothing, and is nothing. Quite strong word. Huh? Maybe I won't say and is nothing, and is boring. <laughs> okay, okay, don't shoot me. All right, so dare to risk it. Second is choose obedience over comfort. Say me, obedience. obedience. Choose obedience over comfort. Jesus says, come, Peter came, Peter got out of the boat. So the context we know, we need to understand is this, that we are not likely to drift into faith. We have to choose. Peter had to make a choice. He wasn't pushed. It wasn't like he was at the boat and then he was hesitating. Then the friends from behind quickly pushed him into the water. No. He made a choice on his own. He made a choice. Faith is always a choice between obedience and comfort. He not only made a choice, he was probably standing there and he was looking back at the boat and onto the sea. The boat is safe. The boat is secure. The boat is comfortable. The boat, like I said yesterday, maybe has aircon or maybe heater because it's night, very cold. And then he looks at the sea. The water is high. The waves are rough. The wind is strong. Not sure how many of you had ever been in experience like this in a boat and strong waves are coming to you. I had many years ago when we were on our staff retreat to one pulau somewhere in Trunganu. I can't remember what is it, uh, Pulau Redang or what, I'm not sure, I think so. And uh, we took a small boat to go there and, and the water was really, really choppy. And uh, for some reason that day, it was really a bad day to go across. And you can really hear the boat was just going up and down, up and down, up and down. And the water was just hitting us. Each time it hit, it's like a big rock hitting the road. You can hear the, the sound. Boom! Boom! You can, the whole thing is shaking. Everybody is quiet except Pastor Toi Cheng praying in tongues all the way. <laughs> or another sister also by my side. Not filled with the Spirit, but on that day, all filled with the Spirit already. <laughs> oh... We are just hoping we can reach the shore safely. What? Stepping out of the boat? No need. Just safely can go home enough already. <laughs> I'm not sure. Probably this is what Peter, eh, please, uh, I stay in the boat. I just hope I can get to shore. It's enough. Some of have to walk on water. It's a choice, uh, an obedience because the Lord says, come. A storm is out there. And if you get out of your boat, you may get drenched. Some of you, let me just tell you, even if you exercise, so just, there will be a risk. Maybe you are even thinking about that drenching moment. You say, wow, if I make this decision, this will happen, that will happen, this will happen, that will happen. And it may probably happen. And it is reality. It may happen. But the point is not whether you get drenched or not. The point here that I want to drive across to you is that will you be willing to obey the Lord or not? Will you be willing to obey the Lord even though, even though you know that this decision that you are making is going to put you in a situation 
that obviously is not going to be as comfortable, as, as, as secure as you were in 2019. As you make this decision that you have prayed about, that somehow in your heart that you feel this is from the Lord, that there is a peace in it when you think about it. But yet on the other hand, when you think about, uh, when you start to list down the consequence of that action, suddenly fear comes in. Uh, and and, and, and you, you are worried. Possibilities of negative consequence coming in. And you are worried. But perhaps today the Lord is telling you, choose obedience. If you, the main thing, as I said always, over and over again, you only need to pray and find out if this is from God. And if you have that confirmation, this is from God, the rest doesn't matter. Comfort is not the question. Comfort is not the question. It's obedience. If you don't get out of your boat, you never experience walking on water. You have the choice. You have the choice to just say, like the 11 disciples, which I brought up, they choose to stay back. They did not want to go. They did not want to follow Peter. They did not cry out to God, Lord, if it is you, call me. No. They decide to just be quiet about it. Let Peter, the loud one, Ke Kiang one, the one who always thinks he's very smart, let him talk, let him go and do what he wants to do. We watch, see lah, ah, we see. Then one, gong gong one, blur blur one. Talk before he think. I see, let's see. We can be that person. Or we can be Peter, even though blur blur, ah, by the grace of God, he experienced Jesus in a way these disciples never experienced. It was a very, very personal and intimate experience. Both walking on water, the sinking, and the hands of the Lord upon him. And also later, a personal lesson from God on why you doubt. I'm sure it was a peak moment. It was a turning point. I'm sure until the day he died, Peter remembered that moment with God. He experienced Jesus like no one had ever experienced. As we go into this year, do you want to experience Jesus in a way that you know it is just Jesus? That you know it is not something that we talk about on the mind, but it is a very, very personal experience of the faithfulness of God. Just like the couple, the Filipino couple, they really experience the faithfulness of God. You'll be very hard to shake the faith of this couple because anything that comes away, they will remember the faithfulness of God. Anyone talk to them about the, your God cannot be trusted, they say no. We have experienced Him. He is faithful. This will be one of those moments in their life. And so I pray, uh, as we launch this year, you all will not be afraid of the discomfort or the possible discomfort of following Jesus Christ as we move into Him. Bible full of people who experience God in a great measure. They experience how God can use them, how God can use them mightily because they are willing to come out of their comfort zone. Moses was called to leave his comfortable job of just staying in the desert, shepherd the sheep, but God's call came upon him. He has to leave that and just go back and not just go back to Egypt, he has to confront. I don't think it's, it's, it's a prospect that any one of us want to do, to confront the most powerful man of that nation and then to rise up to that, that, that call to lead so many people out of that country. You know, I'm sure Moses don't have experience. He wasn't like someone who had experience. And I'm, I'm not sure. Maybe God is calling you. That is why it is faith. Maybe for some of us, God is calling you to do something that you have no experience. 
You dare to take the risk. You dare to come out from your comfort zone. And God can use you mightily in that way. Nehemiah was called uh, when, he, when he was in the palace. I mean, he, he, he definitely had a good life. But yet, God put a burden in his heart to go and rebuild the walls. And that burden includes him, himself, personally, must be there to lead the thing. Not that he gives instruction from the comforts of, his, of the palace, but he has to be there on the ground with the people. And he went. He left his comfort zone and God used him to rebuild the wall. Uh, Gideon was a farmer hiding security in a cave, but God's call came. And he knew he had to leave the security of the cave and to confront the very enemy that, that created that fear in him. Maybe for some of you, God is asking you to face head on the fears that have been holding you back this year. And it's time to rise up and leave your cave and just move and go. And we, of course, we are our best example, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. He, he was not easy on the cross. Definitely not comfortable. Definitely not comfortable to go to the cross, to suffer the lashing, the crucifixion, it's the most painful death. Who more do we want to be our example as a Christian? Who more do you want to be an example for you to live a life of obedience and sacrifice and that willingness to just lay aside that comfort? The Son of Man has no place to lay his head. There's this book, The Signature of Jesus, uh, Brandon Manning, and talking about the imprint of God in our life, the character of Christ imprinted on us. And there was one part that he wrote these words. He says, The signature of Jesus is offered to Christians who have not forgotten that they are followers of a crucified Christ who know that following him means living dangerously. I love this phrase. Following Christ means living dangerously. If ever in your mind today that you think living, following Jesus, and especially for those who are going to be baptised today, this is your good news. It is not just about a life of comfort, a life of blessings. You know, those are good. The Lord will bless you that. But it is also a life of living dangerously when the call of God comes into you. A life of taking risks. It is, we must not forget that they are followers of a crucified Christ who are people who live dangerously, who will want to live the gospel without compromise, who have no greater desire than to have his signature, the signature of Jesus written on the pages of our lives. When we, this year, rise up in obedience, when we rise up in obedience and we dare to forsake comfort when the need arises, Jesus is signed on our heart. Not on your t-shirt, on your heart. On your heart. On my heart. And that's where we want that signature to be. Amen? Amen. So, uh, I remember when we talk about living dangerously, it came to mind about uh, Brother Jean, Sister Anna, and when they went to Bolivia, and they went... Wow, they're excited, going, mission field. They went there. Within weeks, there was unrest in Bolivia. People were burning cars, rioting everywhere. They had to hide in the room. They were posting to us. Some of us were leaders we know. I'm not sure whether we, did we broadcast this, but we were praying very hard for them. 
because there's so much unrest. It was really dangerous time for them, literally. So it does not mean that obeying God, then life is going to be comfort. There's always, there's always this, this, this risk of danger. So, and I'm sure when Jean and Anna answered this call to go to Bolivia, they have considered. They know you'll not be as comfortable as them when they are in Malaysia. They know they will be far away from families. They will not be in a community of Filipinos. They will be with people whom they do not know. And they will be learning a language that they don't know. So it is really not a, 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 a comfortable thing. But they were willing. It's about obedience. And if we really we talk about faith, faith is about obedience, not comfort. Choose obedience over comfort this year. For some of you, if the concern is about comfort, the Lord is telling you, obedience is what I want from you. Don't worry about the comfort. Don't worry about the comfort. You obey. You obey. And when you do so, you are willing to take risks. When you are willing to obey, step out of the boat, then you can expect greater things from God. You can expect greater things from God. It is interesting that in the last line of the passage, we read that those who were in the boat worshipped Jesus and said, truly, you are the Son of God. If you are getting out of your boat, expect to walk on water like Peter, but expect even more. Why I say that? As a result of Peter's walking on water, he not only experienced the walking of the water, which is a miracle, but because of him getting out of the boat and as a result of his failure. So it's just wonderful to see that God can use everything in our life to glorify him. Not just our success, but even our failures to glorify him. To such a point when even the people at the boat, when they see, they see Peter coming up, they see Peter walking on water in obedience to Christ, they see Peter sinking, they see Christ reaching out his hands and saving him, and then it results in worship unto the Lord. What I'm saying here is this, when people get out of the boat, when you get out of your boat, the power of God is put into play and remarkable things happen. Today, I just want to release this to you. God is waiting to glorify Himself in and through your life, but only if you are willing to take that risk, if only you are willing to choose Obedience over comfort. I believe with all my heart, year 2020, God wants to do this work in your life. And we have seen it in our church as we launch out in faith some projects. We have seen God working remarkable things, things beyond what we expected or imagined. We, in launching out our projects like Adopt a Family, we were only hoping that we can be people who are practitioners of the Word, we are doers of the Word. We don't just say we love people, we are just people we believe we need to be responsible to our community. We just move by faith. We just say that we will just do what we need to do and as long as these few people are touched by God, we are happy. But as we consider the outcome of our projects of faith, God actually blesses us far beyond than we imagine. Peter expected 
only to walk on water. But God has a greater plan. Because of that, He not only walked on water, the people in the boat had a greater revelation of who the Lord Jesus Christ is. They saw with their own eyes His power. They saw with their own eyes His compassion. And so, they give praise to the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to say that this could be possible for some of us here today because of your obedience, because of your sacrifice, because of your so-called reckless faith to some. God will be glorified. Just as God was glorified in what we do here. It may not be looking a lot. We are just not hoping much. We are just hoping that we had the opportunity to obey the Lord in just reaching out to the needy around us. Because this is what true religion is all about. But God has blessed us more because of this. People that we cannot preach to, legally speaking, they know. They know who motivates us. They call us Orang Jesus. Means Jesus people. Who gets the glory? They don't know our name, but they know Jesus. They give praise to Jesus whether they realize it or not. Things happen beyond what we hope and dare imagine. We have moments we are invited even to pray. Not by Christians, but by pre-believers to pray for people that we will not have the opportunity to pray for. Why? Because we are willing. We are willing to take that step. I pray today that you do so. Expect greater things from God. The word uh, is greater. Say me, greater. I'm not asking you to expect just great things. I'm not just asking you to expect the same thing that you experienced 2019. I'm asking you and challenging you to expect greater things from God. If you believe that this is a new year and God will want to do a new thing for you, let me tell you, expect not just new things but greater things. You know, Isaiah 43, uh, there's this scripture, the Lord says, forget what happened before and do not think about the past. Look at the new thing I'm doing. It is already happening. Don't you see it? I will make a road in the desert and rivers in dry land. So many of us perhaps will interpret and may not be totally wrong, to say when the Lord says, forget what has happened before and do not think about the past. He is just meaning about the Israelites' disobedience and rebellion towards Him. And He's saying by His grace, He's going to do a new work. You forget. Don't be condemned. You forget. You let it go. That was the past. Now I'm going to new, do a new thing, a work of restoration. It may be that. But I believe that it is even more than that. He was not just warning the Israelites not to be a prisoners of their negative past. I believe that he was also warning the Israelites not to be a prisoners of their positive past. Why do I say that? Because in the context of that scripture, before the forget what happened before, the two verses before says this. This is what the Lord says. He is the one who made a road through the sea and a path through rough waters. He is the one who defeated the chariots and horses and the mighty armies. They fell together and will never rise again. They were destroyed as a flame is put out. And the Lord says, forget, forget about this. Forget what happened. I'm going to do a new work. Forget. This happened is to tell you that I can and able to do a new work in your lives. But you are not to be limited by what has happened. I want to do a greater work. The point here is this, that I want to challenge, I want to propose this thought to you. 
is that do not allow the blessings of the past to set the standard for expectation of the future. Because your God is a God that can do things as what the sister quoted the scripture, Ephesians 3.20, far more than you ever dare to think or imagine. If we really believe in a God who can do far more than we dare to think and imagine, how can we limit Him with what we have experienced the year before? Obviously, a God who can do far more than I dare dream or think or imagine, obviously, obviously, He is a God who can do far more than I have ever experienced Him. I don't know. You have experienced the goodness of God. You have experienced the faithfulness of God. Praise the Lord for that. But today, in this New Year message, I want to tell you this. They open your heart to the possibility that God is going to manifest Himself to you personally in a way that is far greater than you have ever experienced before. Can you hear Amen from God's people? Amen. This is how great our God is. Ephesians 3.20, I like the Amplified Version. He says, Now to him who by, in consequence of, the action of his power that is at work within us, is able, is able to carry out his purpose and do super abundantly. Say me super abundantly. Super. It's the first time I come to such a word, you know. Usually it's abundant. This is super, you know. I thought only young people write this kind of language, you know, awesome, awesome, everything is awesome. Uh, this one is super abundantly. Wow, my God. It's not just going to do some abundant work and, and overflowing work. It's not enough to describe him. It's super. Say me super. super. Oh, he's a super God. Super abundantly. Far above. And above all, not only far over, but above all, that we dare ask or think, infinitely, infinitely beyond, immeasurably. It's not just beyond, you know. I like the adjectives of the Amplified Bible. Immeasurable. It's as immeasurable as the universe. There's no end. We can't even can comprehend the, the, the size of the universe. If we try to do that, we'll grow mad. And today God is saying that, that his, his, his ability to do His work in my life, I cannot even limit Him. There's no limit. It's as infinite as the universe. He dare ask or think infinitely beyond our highest prayer. What is the prayer that you have made that you believe is the most impossible prayer you ask of the Lord. Today, the Lord is telling you, I can do even more than that. I can do more than the most impossible prayer you have ever prayed. Do you believe that, brothers and sisters? As we launch out in this year, may we see the bigness of our God. May we not limit Him with our understanding, with our desires, with our thoughts, with our hopes, with our dreams. Say me, our God is greater. Our God is greater. Really, really, really. I'm not sure if this, okay. Now we're going to close, and I'm going to close with this video. Last year, what the Lord has done for this church. We celebrate that, but we believe that it's going to be a greater year this year. Let's have that video.
one line is if we see it in context, it was also a greater year for us when we think about 2018. In 2019, God did some marvellous things in and through this church and we have grown as a church. We had the opportunities to start many new ministries, maybe not many but essential, important ministry. Uh, God gave us the grace to send our first missionary couple to Bolivia. We never thought that we ever would have that kind of resources, but God gave us the resources, gave us the vision, gave us the resources, opened the door and all is well. And it's also a year now we have started a new work in North Vietnam, not South. North is actually very challenging. There are lack of churches. And we thank God that He gave us that vision and also the faith to start it. And we, we launch in faith. So these are some of the things that uh, the Lord did. And it was definitely greater things that He had done for us in compared to 2019. But now we are going into 2020. And we are going to trust God as well that He's going to do greater things in this church and through this church. He's going to give us, I believe, He's going to give us more opportunities to touch more lives for Jesus Christ, whether in Johor or whether beyond Johor And we are not going to limit God. We are not going to limit God by what we have done in 2019. A lot of things we have done. And as a staff team, I was telling the congregation, it, we look at that. On one hand, we celebrate. On one hand, we are saying, wow, oh, you thank God it's over. Because, gee, we, we really just think about the, the work that we put in. Wow. It's quite tiring. Now, how 2020 finished already? We're always saying this. You, so fast on the year passed by. I thought only last year, we only planned for next year. Now over. I have to plan another year already. You know? It's like one after another, one after another. Um, but we are not going to limit God. We tell ourselves we are not going to limit God. It's not about us. It's not about our comfort. We are serving God. It's not about comfort. It's about obedience. So we are there to launch into 2020. Whatever the Lord sends to us, we are received, we are accept. You know, uh, again, we will just share this, just to pray about it. We, we may, we may, uh, I'm not saying, I'm not sure, we are still praying. If it is the Lord's will, then we may start a new migrant ministry in Forest City. Uh, and, and, and it will be reaching out to mainland Chinese. Okay, we are praying about it. If it is from the Lord, it seems to be uh, some open doors now. And we are praying. If it is from the Lord, we are not going to be afraid. Because the new ministry means new work. You know? We are not going to be afraid. We are not going to be afraid. We are not going to be afraid uh, that God may increase the Sunday congregation. We are not going to be afraid. Yes, we will. In fact, it's already almost full for Sunday. So we may open level two first for those who are serving, and then we'll do it. But then we will not be afraid if we have to come to a third service. Right? We will not be afraid because it's not about comfort, it is about obedience. If this is our cup, then we will drink it. We will not be afraid. This is how we want to. We believe that we need to position ourselves that way. And I'm sharing this to tell you it is not just about the church, it's about your personal life. I do not know what God is saying to you, what God is, where God is leading you personally. But the, the, the Lord may be speaking to you some things that you know that is going to, to, to cost you perhaps your comfort. It is going to, to, to be something that you probably, when you think about it, on one hand you know it's from the Lord, but on the other hand there will be some fears that are coming in. But maybe today... The word of the Lord is to challenge you. You have to remove these barriers if you want God to do a greater work in your life. I believe. If you want to position yourself to receive greater blessings from God, greater experiences from God, then you have to position yourself in this way by saying that I will not be afraid. Even though I have fears, but I will choose not to allow my fears to lead me. I will allow faith to lead me and to position myself in such a point that I will walk the extra mile. It will cost me something, but I will because at the end of the day, it's not my will but yours be done. Lord, if it is your will, 
take that cup away. But if not, then I'm willing to drink that cup if it is meant for me to drink. I believe that when you position yourself in that manner, you just get ready. God is just going to do some wonderful, powerful work in your life and out of your life. Many are going to be blessed. Amen? Will you stand even as we pray? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.